call this meeting to order at 6.09. Um, so thank you guys for coming to the Heartland Board meeting. Um, so we'll start off with um, changes or additions to the agenda. Um, and I'll just read the agenda. So it's, I think some people are just uh, getting to it. So we've got the principal's report, which includes summer plans and outdoor equipment, mm -hmm. uh, the superintendent's report, and then items for discussion include reviewing the budget, um, presentation for town meeting, um, the anti-racism task force, uh, school meals, funding allocation, and then um, we have to take action on the annual school meeting date and shifting from a floor vote to the ballot to a ballot. Um, and that items for action also includes improve, uh, approving the warning so that we can get that out. Um, so that's a pretty reasonable agenda. Um, we will have an executive session at the end of tonight's meeting to discuss a personnel matter. Um, and with that, we can move on to the approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? Okay, there's only three of you, so you guys have to speak up this time. Okay, Colleen. I move that we, that the meeting minutes be approved. Okay, and those are the meeting minutes for February 8th, 2020. For February 8th, that's what I meant to say. Yes, <laughs> I meant to say that as well. <laughs> Beth, is that a second? And I'm happy to second. Okay, so Colleen and Beth, okay. Um, and actually, I should have said before, um, Sarah texted me a few minutes ago and said that she had a family emergency come up and she will join us if she can. And I told her not to worry um, that we could we love to hear her voice, but we could handle this without her if we needed to. So, um, so that is why Sarah's not here. Uh, okay. Um, so, is there any discussion on the minutes? No. I had one question um, that I don't know the answer to, um, so I was going to bring that up, but I lost the minutes on my screen. So hold on a second. There we go. Um, so when we we have um, this is a really minor question. We have the people that are present at the meeting, and so it's the board, and then there's the administration slash school, and then there's the public. And I was wondering um, when school officials come that aren't speaking, are they public or are they, like their school, but are they participating in a public standpoint or? And I just chucked that out there to you guys to decide. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's probably, uh... A good question. I know, like at the official annual town meeting, right? You have to be a resident, but I don't think that's the case. I think they're just considered, you know, um, ex ex officio of the board. You know, they they basically represent you. So I, I don't think they're public. I think they're, you know, um, like, and that would include everybody from Katie. So to that would be okay. Andy, Brittany. Yeah, I don't think they. You would. You wouldn't list them on the public. You'd, okay. listen, you'd probably you'd probably put board then administration yeah. Then public. Yeah, it says administration slash school. It's just such a long list, and I was like, well, but not everybody participated, but they listened, and I just yeah. yeah. I think that's a really matter. good question. We've had we've had uh, a lot of teachers, for instance, at, in the last few months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Listening and some. I think that's a good question. I don't know. No. Yeah, I think they would be considered public. You know, I think I think. Well, that's what I was wondering because this last list has got like, um, so there's you and Christine, Brittany, Ed, Angie, Katie, and then there's Patty, Larissa, Lauren, uh, Michelle, and Shannon. Yeah, that that's public. Th those okay. are considered public. So, yeah. so when we consolidated the agenda format, we she lumped in the administration with school staff as one thing rather than administration separately and staff separately. And I think the point was is that because they do work for the school, we listed them there. But if they brought up a public topic, then that would be listed in the minutes body as whatever topic they were bringing to the table. But I mean, it can go any way you like it. But I think that was the thought behind the consolidation of different formatting of agendas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'll take another look at it. I mean, as you know, I can't get my agenda open, but I will. I mean, the uh, minutes, the minutes open, oh. but I'll. I'll, if you want to send me those two, yeah. I, I will. And I, I just throw it out there. It was just something that caught my eye, and um, I don't think it's really a big point. But um, yeah. we can leave these, and then we can decide the next time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Any further discussion? 
Okay, so let's move on to approvals. All those in favor of approving the minutes of February 8th, 2021, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, or, or raising your hand. Um, and um, any nays and abstentions, no. Okay, so minutes were approved four to zero. Um, public participation, any public? Okay, um, <laughs> and so uh, Christine, we're on to you yeah. already. All right, I'm gonna present my screen. I'm gonna pull up you on my other screen. That's not what I wanted. Can you see my screen? Oops, what did I do? Yes, um, it's coming up. Okay. All right, is it up? Yep. Okay. All right, so we'll get going. Um, start with some awesome uh, news from, from the previous month. We had a really successful community dinner for the first time this year. There's, there's Nikki in the picture with Craig. Um, we served roughly 200 meals. Um, we had a lot of residents come and they were so thankful and appreciative and um, just thrilled that we were um, doing a community event. So we hope to have another one before the end of the year. And this is uh, definitely Craig's vision. Uh, Brittany and I were just the servers outside and it was a community effort. The farm to school team helped cook and put things together and take orders and office staff as well. So it was really a fun, fun event. Unfortunately, we couldn't all eat together, but it was great just seeing community members. Um, Christine, I just have to yeah. comment reading the, yeah. um, the little brochure that came yeah. with it literally brought tears to my eyes because it oh. made me realize that this really was a community thing. Yeah. It made me feel so connected to the community. And I just want to oh, send a good. huge thank you to Craig because it, it really felt connecting and, and talking to everybody who was eating the same food and enjoying it. Um, so it was really yeah, awesome. It, it was fun. It was a, definitely a needed um, pick me up celebration of sorts. So we'll do it. Yeah, I actually one. shared the brochure with some other schools that I work with oh. as, an, as a good example. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'll let that was the uh, sixth grade took that on. Um, that's great. Yeah. So I'll share that with them. That's great. Um, another uh, positive. Um, I know that we, we've shared that we've slowed down on the interdisciplinary units, but um, our art teacher, Ms. Steving, has done such an incredible job with this quilting unit that the second through fourth graders have been working on. And um, the whole, it, it was a team effort, but Anne, I mean, she cut all of these beautiful fabric pieces and has the patience of a saint teaching second through fourth graders to sew by hand. Um, and they each made something a pillow or something of that they wanted and were able to bring it home. So I just wanted to shout out to Anne. She um, is super flexible and changed plans and changed direction multiple times this year without, you know, without missing a beat. So excited to share that. Um, future planning uh, has started. So just so you know, and David may share this later, we've convened a restructuring committee that met for the first time last week. Our goal is to identify positive takeaways from teaching during this pandemic. We've learned a few things um, and really pull out the ones that align with our strategic plan and move them forward um, next year and, and years to come. So once we have those priorities mapped out, we're gonna um, convene our in-house scheduling committees and begin you know, planning structures for and schedules for next year. So that work has started. It'll be, it'll be a lot of work, but we're excited to, to move forward. Um, Summer Academy, I think Katie's going to unmute and speak about the, what we're planning for our um, summer programming. Um, so this is the, the, the brief overview. So we have plans to hold a um, pretty robust summer programming um, using our ESSER funds. Um, three hours of academic instruction in the morning um, with emphasis on regaining um, uh, learning loss in thematic integrated units. The three pillar pillars 
of recovery um, planning have to do with mental health, engagement, and academic achievement. And way we're going to get to that, um, engagement around um, engaging students in some fun activities during the morning, as well as um, partnering or aiming to partner with the rec department in Windsor and Heartland to support students in the afternoon. On the um, uh, mental health aspect, we are hope and HCRS staff will be embedded. We have a partnership with both for the summer, HCRS especially, um, providing several staff members to us to work with all students, so not just identified students, so that's pretty cool. Um, the goal is small class sizes, two adults per classroom, um, working on the transportation logistics now um, so that students could be bused from their town, from their home school to Windsor and either back to the home school midday if they're not going to do the rec department or to the rec department um, for the afternoon. Um, right now, we have students who are being found eligible directly through their TMP scores, looking at that and if, if they're identified in other manners, like a 504 or an IEP. Um, the goal is if space is available, that parents would be able to um, request that their child also attend if they're not already on that list as long as we have space. So we're in the planning stages now of getting a couple of co-coordinators and we're hoping to have information out to parents within the next couple of weeks so that they can give us an early identification if their child is interested. And I forgot to put on my slide, I just realized um, we're planning to run this from July 6th through August 6th. So five weeks, um, five days a week with the exception of the first week in July because that first Monday is still a holiday. And we did have a fair number of staff, Katie, that seemed interested in working this summer. Yes, we put a, um, sorry, my, these are echoing horribly. Um, we put an email survey out to folks in both professional staff and support staff indicating they were interested. And then I, I, we're getting trickles of people who are still saying, I don't think I entered the survey, but I want to be, I, I also want to work this summer, which is kind of nice. It's been a long year and we're going to make sure everybody still gets vacation time because where that's important, that's the mental health for everybody too, to still get vacation while still being able to do this. So thank you, Christine, for that part. Sure. All right, any questions for Katie? All right, hearing none, we'll move forward. Um, so last month, uh, there was a question about outdoor education and, and funds, if we had any left, and where we're at in our work um, on the 17 acre woods. And so, I was in touch with Jill Rubin, who spearheaded the um, fundraising over the summer, and we do have a, a more money than I thought we had left over in our fund, over $1,000. Um, and then I met with Jennifer Waite at National Park, the uh, Park Service, who's worked with us on um, grant writing and, and helping us uh, facilitate the process of getting a site plan for the, for the walkway down. Um, so she, sh I wish I could have brought one home, but it was a virtual meeting, but she showed me the signs that that's the eighth graders uh, two years ago um, drafted um, a, a visual for the signs and they are done. They're, they're beautiful. They're metal. So they'll last a long time. And her hope is that in the spring, later in the spring, we'll be able to have um, some eighth graders help uh, put up those boundary markers through the um, through the property with the conservation um, committee members who who want to help with that. So we're excited about that. Um, we are um, trying to collect information and pictures, which which I have a ton. I'm sharing them with Jennifer uh, to try. She's gonna she's gonna prepare some preliminary grant you know information in case uh, grants come up become available, and she's looking for donors. The first stage of the trail, which would be the walkway down, down the steep slope, is $70,000. So it's a big, big amount of money. And then to go over the wetlands um, to complete the project, it's another $100,000. But we'd like to get busy um, raising money for the f at least stage one of that, um, that trail down. Any questions? Okay. I will say, I know that um, Dave has posed um, the school taking over that property. 
And there has been some hesitation on the school's part only because we then become liable and we have to manage that space. Um, so Jennifer and I talked about perhaps a, a lease um, with the town. So if you have ideas or you know opinions on that, I'd love to I'd love to hear them. What does that mean taking over? Do it, it means uh, we would own it. The town would deed it to the school. Oh, okay. And, and then we be... we would have to manage it. And when trees were dangerous, you know, or uh, mm -hmm. it needed to be you know cut down or taken down, we would be responsible. So, um, you know, it is. It's it's in discussion at this point. Um, we can't do a lot. I will say we can't do a lot right now down there. Um, not owning the property, like any permanent structure. I know the kindergarten teachers would love a more permanent structure down there and not owning the property doesn't really allow us to do that kind of work down there. So just things to think about moving forward. Christina, ways back, we had a committee looking at all of this. Um, and I just want to make sure that like if it's easier for you to coordinate on this stuff right now one on one that's great but if you need help later on make yeah. sure you speak up i'm sure i'm sure i will nikki uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, it was you know it it was interesting i emailed um jennifer and she was like oh i was just thinking about contacting you cuz um it's that time you know yeah. we're coming under the pandemic and we want to get back on track so but yeah it'll be yeah. definitely a community effort yeah, yeah. So let's let's just figure out when it's more than you can handle. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Okay. Yeah. And Christine, feel free to reach out to me too if just if you need any help with grant writing around this. And because uh, I'm part of the Upper Valley Teaching Place Collaborative, so we have like a whole body of research of like why place-based oh. education is so important and that kind of stuff. So we can get some good quotes there. And yeah, maybe we should um, convene a meeting. I think with with all of us, <laughs> or some of us, with Jennifer, and kind of make a plan. That would be great because it it is going to take a, a a good a good committee to get this up and running and completed. Christine, have you thought about those other structures? I know you mentioned it a month ago because I know you did a lot of work to mm -hmm. provide outdoor structures, and some of them did not manage to survive the winter. What, what, what are you thinking? You'll just do the best you can when spring rolls around? Yeah, I've, I've spoken with Joe. Um, as soon as they are uh, not frozen into the ground, we'll see what we can salvage of, of the um, carports that came down. And I think we'll be able to you know, use the parts to, to put more of. The teachers want them back. I mean, I it's bet. really nice to be outside and have shade and eat under them and, you know, sit out, you know, kids work out there. It was really really nice in the fall so we will get them it also gives a little bit of rationale though for even more permanent structures you know that yeah. we could, yep. whether it's on that land or uh, on the existing land because you know that was that teachers really used that and they they used it in all the buildings you know so yeah yeah the ones the the more expensive we bought two that were metal and they survived um and those are fourth grade um, spots and they go at fourth grade goes out every day multiple times a day so that's nice yeah it's been great okay mm -hmm. um, COVID updates you may have heard the cheering from the school um, <laughs> vaccinations are are happening we've ha we had a number of staff vaccinated over the weekend and and last week and we have um, I think anybody that really wants an appointment, which is most staff have been able to secure one in the next couple of weeks. Um, we did have some some staff vaccinated this weekend that um, definitely were feeling under the weather today. So um, we're trying to spread them out so we don't have a, a lot of staff out at the same time. Um, we're still masking and distancing and believe that will continue into the future for a while. Um, we stopped surveillance testing this this month. It would have been this week, but we've decided um, to not um, go forward with surveillance testing as so many people are are already vaccinated. And um, 
David may share a little bit later. The recovery team um, begins meeting this week to work on our recovery plan. And Katie referred to the pillars that we're going to be focusing on so socio emotional functioning, mental health and well being, student engagement, and academic achievement. So, those are the guiding, guiding pillars that we'll be working with. And other updates, just to keep you informed, um, TMP assessments will start at the beginning of April. We hope to have some, some of the testing done to share the results at conferences, which will happen the week um, of the 5th through the 9th. We are um, going to be taking SBACs this year, so we're, we're figuring out when and, and how we're going to do that. Um, and um, I think I already mentioned, oh, maybe I didn't mention, we are... Oh, you did. I did. I did. I have that twice. The restructuring committee is meeting. I think I moved it and forgot to delete it. Yeah. It's a it's a pretty big committee. So Yeah, it is. And then um, Angie uh, is going to present the latest wellness data from the staff survey. And I'll click on it, Angie, so that we can see it. Here it comes. Yeah, so in my excitement of getting the vaccine, I totally and completely forgot to send the survey Friday. <laughs> so it would have been, I, and I was like, shucks. And I wasn't gonna send it today because I have a very busy week and looking at the results just wasn't gonna happen. So I'll send it again Friday. But I'm thinking that perhaps if, if, if I am feeling lighter having had the vaccine, I can imagine that our most worried staff that were able to avail themselves of the vaccine are feeling a little better about things. Um, so next slide, please, Christine. So these results were from what, Sorry. Two, two Fridays <laughs> ago. Um, so you can go ahead. What was interesting about this particular batch of responses is that we got about we were typically getting about 130, and this is only 80 responses, and probably there might be about five of them in there that are duplicates. It's that weird thing that happens with Google survey. So um, and so the next line, I mean, next slide, please, next line. <laughs> um, and so it 57.5% at four and five, that concerns me. Um, it seems like la that week, so two weeks ago, was a was higher stress for folks. Um, and when I read through the comments, um, there seemed to be a lot, uh, several comments related to student behavior, um, lack of consequences for student behavior. And again, this is SU wide. I don't, um, we don't ask the question about wh which building you work in, so um, that doesn't. It's just those were the kinds of things. The other, there were many things just related to the pandemic and trying to uh, navigate the pandemic and all the requirements, et cetera. So next slide, please, Christine. So these are the number of staff reporting low stress. The other category, those are folks like our BCBA, um, uh, speech language, uh, that sort of thing. Next slide, please. Low to moderate stress. Next slide, please. Moderate stress. So our classroom teachers make up um, this, the red quadrant, the blue quadrant, special educators. So those are teachers as well. And then the unified arts teachers. So more than half of this circle are reporting of the folks who reported moderate are teachers. Next slide. Again, moderate to high stress, you can see that the bulk of the responses in that area were classroom teachers. And final slide, please. And then high stress um, is really more from across the board, but um, this top, that orange would be teachers and blue would be teachers. And the reason that I look at the teachers is because I do think our teachers hold a lot of the stress. Um, I do uh, I do think that they hold, a, uh, they feel a lot of responsibility for what happens in their classroom and in their space. So um, I am not, certainly not uh, dismissing the amount of stress that our para, uh, Paris um, 
our paras also uh, are, in, are exposed to as well, because they're often supporting those teachers in the classroom and those students who are really struggling um, just in general. Are there any questions? It looks like this contains the majority of our nurses too, from an SU standpoint. Right. So that's concerning that and they're there, I'm but I get to, it. I'm trying to think. I think that at this week, we didn't know that the vaccine was coming yet. I think, so think two Fridays ago, because basically that all unfolded last week and we got the message that the vaccines were open. So I, I do wonder if um, we got some rather discouraging news that we wouldn't be, you know, at, we wouldn't be getting the vaccine. So the, I, I, I'm sorry that I didn't get the, 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 Thing put out this the survey put out Friday but again with only 80 folks responding to it who knows how many would have responded Friday so it'll I'll send it out again on Friday and hopefully um, encourage my colleagues to avail themselves of the survey so we can get some good comparable data I think that'll be useful but I think it's okay that we missed a week too uh, and yeah. the, the good news was for me, I was um, scheduled, my shot was in Springfield and uh, we ended up getting the Johnson and Johnson shot. So the there was a number of people that were at that clinic on Saturday. So the one and done. So that's. Yeah. And, and it, will be, it will be interesting, right? To see what, you know, whether or not the vaccine affects the stress level. We've, we've probably had SU wide, probably well over half of the staff vaccinated so i mean yeah it's it's it'll be interesting to see what happens with that the last the, the communication from the aoe around the vaccine not to be you know not to be critical but it wasn't it wasn't great i mean we angie and i got an email mid-morning on monday saying you know here are the educator codes and you know we we had no idea that this was how it was going to be you know put out so and we got those codes right out as soon as we got them so then folks could go ahead and schedule but it was it was maybe it's probably a good thing we didn't put out a survey last week because there was probably more anxiety about scheduling the vaccine than than anything else at that point but I think people have figured it out now so yeah, and, uh, and a lot of people got in through the federal um, program right. but through Walgreens so right yeah yeah you, there, there were several ways to do it so scott do you have a question yeah please i had a couple questions i'll just spit them out and then you guys can answer them um going back to um the testing surveillance testing christine mm -hmm. which is confused i thought that was uh, an agency of education initiative so i didn't know how, how uh, a school district could opt in or out of that and my second question is um didn't I hear, can I have some confirmation that um, universal meals are extended through the summer well, along with the the summer program that Katie was talking about? So that'd be interesting to hear about that. Thanks. I could just say the federal, the federal program said that the summer meals are continuing and they reduced all the issues with like having to qualify, like having a certain percentage of free and reduced and all that kind of stuff. So those are the things that dropped. So the summer programs can just keep happening everywhere and I, i'll answer this COVID surveillance testing it always was an opt-in for school districts you didn't have to do it and they offered various windows for different groups of, of systems and we heard that if you have been vaccinated you possibly could have a false positive so um we wanted to not deal with that so we didn't offer it yeah we, our next surveillance testing is April 20th. Yeah, and we may or may not. I mean, I think it'll depend on the percentage of folks who are vaccinated. It's a little bit disruptive too. I mean, Angie puts in a lot of work. The nurses put in a lot of work. Uh, yeah, and then you got to run stuff to a bag it, mail it. it. It's it's it takes a lot out of the school day. So we may we may that, that we may not do it from for the next couple of months we'll, we'll keep you posted and that's the end of my report thanks christine sure. um thanks. david you're up next unless there's any yeah. questions 
Any questions for Christine? We good? Thank you. It's always good following Christine, like I say, because she basically covers everything that I would, I was going to cover in my report, which is which is great, um, because a lot of this happens SU wide, but it also happens on the ground level too. So I think it's important uh, to do that. Um, so uh, the restructuring task force is 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 up and running. Uh, I, I mean, is yeah, the restructuring task force is up and running, as Christine said. Uh, we've had one meeting. We'll have another one this Thursday. We'll keep you posted on that. That's really to just take a look, as Christine said, on how we're going to uh, basically capture some of the really good things that happened this year, including outdoor education, interdisciplinary work, teaming. Um, so we'll 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 keep you po posted on that. I didn't know whether or not uh, Angie, if you had any more you wanted to say about the recovery uh, effort. I mean, that is a statewide initiative. Uh, we do have to put together a recovery plan and there is a little bit of a timeline again we, we get the guidance slowly it trickles out of the aoe but angie do you want to sort of talk about what what we've done so far in terms of appointing so the the first thing that we had to do was send them the names of the recovery coordinator and um our team and our team consists of our administrative team and then we will be inviting uh much like we did for our um school reopening team will be inviting uh, teachers, uh, special educators, uh, local physicians, uh, mental health workers, our school counselors, et cetera, as needed. Um, so that's the only thing that we've done. The next thing that's supposed to happen is we're supposed to start getting, we're supposed to get some sort of recovery toolkit because we have to do a needs assessment and then, um, and then we should be writing the plan and we have not seen a plan template or anything. I think they're working just as fast as they can to get us those things. And mm -hmm. um, so that's basically yeah. where we're at. The, it's Christine told you in her report that we will be meeting this week to start our, you know, generating our ideas and thinking about what our recovery plan could look like. Um, and then I think we probably, if we don't have the form by then, then we will just take down all our ideas and we will imagine what it, it and imagine what they may want because they said, I heard it was going to look a lot like our continuous improvement plan. Right. So when we need to really think about what data we need, um, we also put an advertisement out to our local in, in, in house right now, an internal advertisement for an assistant recovery coordinator who will be assisting me in um, the data, um, data collection, data interpretation, helping assist principals in the buildings for making sure that the recovery plan strategies are being followed and implemented in the way we wanted, et cetera. Yeah. And, and I think part of the reason, well, certainly the summer program is a is a, is a fairly healthy piece of that recovery plan. And I give uh, credit to, to Katie and the whole staff really for the work they put into. We didn't, we didn't know given the year that everybody's had whether or not anybody would want to keep working, but good, good, good response. And I think it's going to allow us to serve a fair number of kids this summer for that five week period, but that'll be part of the recovery plan. I will tell you, and for those of you on the SU board, you'll see, I think it might have even gone out today. You'll see that we are going to look at the calendar for next year. And one of the things that the calendar is proposing is that we start after Labor Day. And part of that for kids and part of that is to give the staff as much of August as we can, you know, to let them let the kids rest up, let families rest up, let the staff uh, rest up. So uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the SU board will support that. I can't see it doesn't really affect M much else but that that was that was part of the reason uh for uh for doing that on the legislative front not much the the the, the cro crossover is going to happen it looks like there are three pretty serious efforts at the state level there's a lot of efforts at the state level but three seem to have legs under them uh one is the uh, changing of that waiting formula that waiting formula and that's going to basically I think play well to the rural districts because there's going to be a rural variable, a rural factor, you know, levied into that waiting waiting formula, including a rearrange a little bit of a rearrangement about the way they look at 
poverty and define poverty. So I think in the end, all of our schools will do well by the by the revisions of that weighting factor, and that's going to start as early uh, as next year. The other is um, there is a there is a literacy bill which is part of not only the Recovery uh, Act but also um, um, you know just general school reform and school uh, uh, school improvement efforts. Um, the state wants to have a real focus for the next couple of years on literacy. I mean, we've done that before. We'll do it again. They're not going to mandate a literacy program, but they're going to, uh, you know, and this will be part of our recovery plan. Anyhow, they're going to make us or, or have us take a look at our literacy data and and then decide what kinds of changes we need to make to uh, uh, to engage in that. So that'll be, I think that'll be great. And the, and the last thing uh, that, that uh, we're dealing with now is that the state really has the authority to take these federal monies and figure out ways to disperse them. So we had the original CARES piece, then we had what's called ESSER-1, uh, which is going to fund some of some of our summer program, um, and and some other things will be in that. And then there's uh, ESSER-2 and supposedly ESSER-3. And, uh, and ESSER-3 is part of the package that just got that's that 1.9. Sometimes I can't even imagine these numbers, but I think it's 1.9. Is it trillion or big? I don't. I don't even know. It's it's a lot of money. Let's put it that way. And there's a chunk of that money uh, that is going to go to um, some of the municipalities, but a lot to public, you know, to, to education. So uh, the estimates are on ESSER two, which will be for the next. That, that'll be able to be used over the next two years could be, it's going to be over a million dollars to RSU. Uh, and then with respect to ESSA 3, uh, you know, Ed said that there's some indication that that could double. So, and, and, and that will go through, that might even go through 24. So we'll, the problem with this is making sure you carefully figure out a plan that helps it to be sustainable, right? Because once that money's gone, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a problem. So that, that, that there are other things that the legislature is talking about, but when I talk to Elizabeth and John Bartholomew and uh, and John Arison, who represents Weathersfield, uh, things like the community school idea of you know uh, merging healthcare, mental health, everything under one roof. I guess Molly Stark they use that as an example. That's a school that's got I don't know a dentist office in the school and doctor's offices and all that stuff. So that's been around a while. I remember the, the Robert Wood Foundation, um, you know, funded some of that even 15, 20 years ago, but it's it's coming back now. Sort of one-stop shopping at the schoolhouse door and also having our schools be used year round rather than just during the school year. They're an investment that pretty much doesn't get used uh, year round. I think I think that's about it. I think I think Christine covered everything else. If there are any questions, feel free to ask them. But that's a, what I've got on my list. Go for it, Scott. And and I got my vaccination today too. So go easy. On <laughs> I'm I'm a patient now. So and I do I actually I actually feel a little logy tonight, which is. Maybe that's why I can't open my Google Drive. I don't know. <laughs> which, which one did you get, David? Which one? Uh, I got the Moderna. Yeah, the Moderna. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, not the one and done. That would have been that would have been nice, but I got to go back in April and and get another hit. So we'll see. we'll see. And they tell me that one's a little worse. So we'll. The <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll 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 see. I I feel fine though. I can handle any questions, Scott. Go ahead. It just seemed it seemed like in the. Um, in the press, there was, I thought you were going to mention as far as like bills with legs that, um, that Universal Meals was revving up again. Yes. Yeah. That, that's about that. And, uh, yeah. And you know, that one, that one's sort of, according to Elizabeth and, and, and John Bartholomew, that it sort of revs and then it drops and then it revs and then it drops. And, and that's uh, Senate Bill 100, S100. And that's basically to ensure that in the next two to five years, every school in Vermont is is a universal meal school, right? And 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 what and certainly what the superintendents are hoping, and I'm sure all of you are hoping, is that if the state decides to do that, that there's some uh, shall we say 
healthy amount of money that comes out of that ed fund because if we just lay that on the backs of uh you know of the local taxpayer it's 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 not going to help we we've done some calculating in in rsu more recently one thing i will tell you is that because of universal meals uh and the work craig's done uh the lunch program we just and maybe next time ed could give an update or craig could give an update but right now we're you know we're running we're running in the black which is which is good we budget into your budgets uh right those subsidy amounts to take care of uh debt and deficits but right now it looks like they're there may not be one at the end of this year, but it's a catch-22. You've got you got to get participants to get revenue, and vice versa. So, uh, yeah. So I think it could it could it could have legs, Scott. I just I'll oh, go ahead, Beth. I was going to say, there's other parts of that bill, too. There's a local um, purchasing incentive. So schools would be reimbursed at a higher rate for local purchasing as well. So that's really exciting. Um, as well as um, funding the farm to school um, grant program at the state level, um, fully funding at like 500000 a year or something like that. So um, that's also all part of it. So that's really exciting. So yeah, it does go up and down. So, um, whatever support, you know, they're still looking for, you know, those postcards of support and things like that. Yeah. Um, or just, you know, and I think John and Elizabeth are both fully aware of it and on total on totally on board um, with it as yeah. well. Yeah. As I was and I have to thank you, David, for putting that little blurb in the, in your weekly update. That was super mm. sweet of you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the point I wanted to make was that I think uh, and David said the taxpayers. So that's where I'm going. Basically, the uh, it's unfortunate that it's that people see that as a negative and they forget to think that um, that in Heartland there are I guess less than 300 kids in school these days in the building, but those children have families and caregivers at home. And whatever the the out of pocket is for meals, whatever it is, it's coming from those families. It's not so it's not it's not that we're that is not coming out of our town. It's just coming out of a very concentrated number of families. Mm -hmm. And we have a chance to put our philosophies in our yeah. and there's a lot of people around what's the cost of not feeding children. You know, so what's the cost for, you know, other interventions that you have to be putting in place? Um, because and just, you know, what's your school lunch debt look like and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm really excited that that Craig's doing such a great job and it's in the black. I won't say I told you so, but it's that cycle. <laughs> I knew he could do it. Um, and I have to say, I mean, and give a big um, chair of applause for, for Craig, too, because he's actually spreading his knowledge already. He met with the White River School. Um, to actually help them go to an independent program and just kind of helping their principal think through that and what kind of person they need to hire and stuff. So he's actually going beyond the SU and helping other folks and stuff too. That's great. Yeah. And, so, and can I chime in there, Beth? I could tell you, as my, my husband hears about it too, who teaches at the White River School. So I put a plug in constantly for Craig and the Austin Food. Mm. Um, so we're, we're trying to get the word out. As long as they don't hire Craig from out, out of Honduras. Yes. <laughs> it's a little bit closer for him. Yeah. I, I think we're, we interrupted Scott, though. You, you had more, Scott? I did, and it's gone. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not right. You're too young for that. <laughs> but I just yeah. think, I think our communities, um, I think our community is behind it. I don't like to hear the idea that um, it's going to cost the community more to do this is already costing the community and the other thing i think is a, uh, an untruth is that i don't know why it would be difficult if there was a universal uh, meals framework why it would be difficult to then continue to go to uh garner the the frl applications and the data from that 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 is so important uh instrumental in uh, title one right is that am I, am I throwing up a number here but that's important information for the school and yeah. people are talking about like a universal meals program somehow disrupting that data flow I don't yeah. get that 
Yeah. It, can, it can just be harder to collect that information when people are already getting the meals for free. So if they're saying, oh, I have to do a free meal application while well, I'm already getting it, it doesn't make any sense. So it's just it's just a hard, you, you just have to sell it differently is what it comes down yeah. to. It's more different communication. So. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot more tied to that application than just meals. You know, students can get free SATs, reduced um, application fees and all kinds of other stuff too. So we can certainly, if it comes to it, we can figure out that that uh, communication. It's kind of interesting because that's the point at which you're collecting that information. Yeah, you've lost your reason for collect. You haven't, we have a reason to get it, but you kind of lost your talking point for getting it. How do we, ha I mean, when you don't get the information about people that don't fill them out, is, do we use like general census data to kind of understand, I don't know, community income? You can, we, right? We, we, we ask everybody to fill it out every year, Colleen. It goes home to all families and- We probably do fill it out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's a lot of paperwork, but it's worth it. And we have a pretty good turnout. You know, a lot of parents fill it out for us, so. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. I gotta say along <clears throat> these lines, the whole community school idea to me is brilliant. And I think it really fits with the direction that we all kind of want to go in anyway um, for our communities. And, um, you know, looking at this, I don't know if we'd be eligible or not um, for a grant if this even goes through, but I think it's something that we may want to take a bigger picture look at yeah. um, as a community and, and maybe even as an SU for each of our schools. But um, yeah. yeah, I think it so. Seems so smart to me with the needs of our community populations and what we have to offer them and what they have to offer us. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, there are things we can do. That's part of the restructuring work we're hoping develops, but there are things we can do even if the state slows it down. But I, I, I would, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself, but I would certainly try to be a pilot site, uh, at, even SU wide, if we could, if this thing develops. Um, so let, let, let's keep an eye on it. I, I think it's a great idea. Is that state level or a federal? Right now, this is at the state yeah. level. But there are, a lot of, there are a lot of foundations, you know, that are, that, that are also behind this and, and a lot of other agencies. But, yeah, right now, this is a state initiative at, at our legislative level. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm excited to see how the most recent bill that was passed impacts us yeah exactly financially, uh, from the federal government i haven't gotten a chance to read a whole lot about what the school benefits are but yeah, i want a, I, a, I want to be able to take advantage of it and yeah. fight for our part of it you know be prepared to do that yeah. there's a lot in there for low income and even middle america i mean i just it's just a whole unique sort of approach. So right. We'll and it's an opportunity that doesn't come a lot. So no, I really hope no. we, you know, it's been a long time since right. the federal government's turned toward school right. stuff at all. So Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're critical all the time, but they're not always really trying to be all that supportive. But yeah, it, sh it should be interesting. So David, we're still on the superintendent's report. Do you have? No, I'm I'm done. Okay. I'm done. Awesome. Um, okay, so uh, items for discussion. Um, I'm going to shift things around um, because I think the review of the budget for town meeting um, is the bigger portion, and I think we can check through these other things pretty quickly. Are you guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. um, so the first one, the anti-racism task force, is that I have no update. Um, so. Oh, that's where we are. We're trying to schedule a meeting. The meeting might be tomorrow. Um, and I um, have too much on my plate and dropped a ball for a little bit. So yeah. a very important ball that I don't want to drop. And um, that's actually one of the topics at the next meeting is potentially finding help for me to juggle balls. So, um, so there's that one. Uh, and then uh, the school meals funding allocation. We had a discussion of that at the SU level. Um, I think it made sense to everybody, but right now it's a moot point because we've got universal meals right now. 
Um, so I think, did, did we make a decision or did we just table it until it was important? I, I, I don't think we ever voted on anything. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, Bev could go back. Oh, I mean, Wendy could go back and check the minutes. But I think, um, yeah, I think there was consensus, though, that, you know, it probably shouldn't be done necessarily on. on right. There was no final vote on anything. You're right. Everyone pretty much agreed that how it's currently done probably doesn't necessarily make sense. And then they taught it, started to talk about how to use the indicator of on site as a way to count pupils and make the allocation fair in that way. So I think it's just a matter of going back to it and finalizing it. But I didn't hear anyone say they, they weren't in agreement of changing. Yeah. And I guess um, just for the uh, public that may watch this later, we're talking about um, re rejiggering the way that we um, allocate the excess money that's spent out of the food program. So when the food program goes into the red, um, talking about how we reallocate it um, based on the people in the school. But, um, okay, so that one, and I, that may not come back if we continue to see progress on the uh, universal yeah, meals. Especially on the universal. And the, e the reason why this is easy right now is because the food service program is a separate fund. It's not even part, right, it's not part of the general supervisory union fund it's 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 got its own fund number so how we split that up at the end is really i mean the su board can decide that now that all three districts are participating yeah yeah i think yeah. it'll be easy to work it out and hopefully it doesn't come up again well maybe if we stay in the we, black it's not yeah. even an issue <laughs> and maybe we'll always have universal meals and that won't exactly that'll take, care of that. <laughs> that'll take okay. care of so now we'll go back to the um, review budget for town meeting, and it's really review budget presentation. Uh, Scott. Yeah, Nikki, a question about the equity policy. The, um, as I've said at SU meetings, um, I understand that you are very, very busy. I, I, I'm not disputing that. And, and you're doing this single handedly for this board. I'm not sure who, I'm not sure even who's, I've lost track of who's on the, Colleen's with us too. Okay, Colleen. Colleen and Nikki. Um, and Christine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm kind of disappointed that it's not in you guys, but just that the really the outcome of this is that there, to my knowledge, there's no equity policy on the books for Wisesu right now. And there is one, a generic equity policy that could be warned and adopted from VSBA. I'm, I'm looking for clarity of like, is what you guys are working on going to be it? Or could there be two in the future? One that is your policy that more about racial bias? The policy that we're looking at is an anti-racism policy. So it's anti not. Yeah. Um, okay. And so I don't, I, I haven't seen I don't think the VSBA has an anti-racism policy. I think, you're, I think you're correct about that, yeah. But they have an equity that's, policy. That's specifically what we're looking at. And I know that um, I know there's a lot of people in the community that are anxious to see it. Um, and um, we're trying um, to get feedback from the right places. And so the next at the next meeting, um, we're going to decide how we engage the rest of the community and what that engagement looks like. Um, and from there, it'll probably go to the SU board um, so that they can review it. Um, but I don't think that it will be presented as a policy yet until we get that community engagement. Yeah. So I, I admit to be kind of slow on the um, uptake and but is the is the happenings primarily in the Escutney district in the past year, the reason for the great deal of caution in your committee, Nikki, before anything becomes public, because that's what, that's what bothers me the most. It just, no, understand. Not, no, not necessarily. Um, <clears throat> it's more that that's how they're encouraging. They're encouraging you to um, like, the way we normally do policies is that we say this is the right thing for the school. Here it is. 
Um, but the encouragement on this type of work is to not just throw it up there and say, look, this is what we're doing, um, but to educate the community as it's going up to say, this is what we're doing and this is why it's important. Um, and so that's why it's being slow walked to this. Well, that's, that's exactly the what I don't see happening. That's why I'm, so far it's not out there being discussed. No. No. It's, it's because we haven't developed the plan to do that. That's, so, what, this, that's what this next meeting is about. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I fully take the blame for the last month's delay. No, I'm not. There's a lot. The whole the whole Wisesu has a team for this. So, I mean, I, I'm not blaming you. Um, no, I, I'm the of the team. That's the problem. She's the chair. <laughs> He deserves the blame. No. Yeah, yeah I'm the owner of the problem right now, and so. Um. But, but but I also think what Scott said it does it would not. Uh, remember, we're going through this policy. We sort of we have a, uh, a system now of reviewing policies, you know, on a fairly regular basis. Um, it would not, you know, and I don't I don't think that equity policy at the at the VSBA level was a required policy it might have been a recommended policy that's right that's yeah. right so we could we could any board member including you scott could say you know let's take a look at this get it in our format and bring it back you know because we're, we're we're doing two things we're looking at the ones that we currently have on the books and we're also looking at that v, vsba list and deciding is there anything we want to bring forward so so that's one because that's a more global equity uh, policy, which. Um, so I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn, but just so you know, the agenda for the next SU board meeting on March 22nd includes the policy review for district equity. So it's on the agenda for that meeting. So if that's what you're referencing, it's on already. Okay. So there we go. And that's that is different, different than the anti racism. Right. That is different. That's exactly. Different. Yeah. yeah Thank you, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you for the update, Nikki. Yeah, I wish it was more, um, but we're going to meet tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so it will be more by the SU meeting. That's my goal. Um, <clears throat> OK, so the uh, budget review for town meeting. Um, Christine, we had gone through the slides. Did we want to? I can't remember. Were we going to present them today or are we? I'm happy to present them. They're working are they, they haven't changed. Have they changed, Christine, or no? Uh, well, Nikki and I did some, yeah, a little, a, no, we, well, we decided to take a really future forward approach to the presentation and took out um, some of the parts that we might normally present. Yeah. Let's, um, let's bring I them up. It up. Yep. That'd be good yeah. to see. Yeah. Let's, um, okay. that'll let's help me. Um, okay. Christine and I, in our, we met to talk about how we were going to present um, the the uh, budget and where the school is um, and where we're going. And in previous years, we've really dug in on the numbers. Um, the numbers are not changing dramatically this year. Um, and so we decided to really look at what's more important is where we're going in the future. Um, and so that's where we are. Christine, you want to go on the next slide? Yeah, just tell me when to go and I'll. I was going to look at, uh, okay, so let's see. Yeah, we'll just, let, let's, okay, go again. We'll get, we'll send these out officially, but um, yeah. this is just, I want to get comments on like the direction that we're going in before we make this really final. So skip. Yep. Uh, skip. Yep. <laughs> this is all numbers. You guys all know those, these numbers. Skip. Okay, so here's, um, I love this uh, slide because it is so chaotic and um, it is so what we're trying to manage. Um, and so these are all the things that we're going to try and pull off um, in the future of education um, at Heartland. And it's all about what we talked about in the um, strategic plan about um, learning to learn um, and being engaged in your own learning. 
So keep going. Yep. So we talk about the strategic plan and so, our five competencies. So Nikki, before we go, we had um, talked on the next slide of having Angie do the rollout of the strategic plan that she's done in other um, meetings in other schools in the SU. Yeah. And, and she said, and I'd love her to unmute and talk about it. She said she's done it two ways. She's, she's done it at the beginning of the meeting to kind of set the stage and then we tie back to it. And then she's done it at the end. I think she said doing it at the beginning seemed more um, of a better fit, but Angie, do you want to speak to that? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was two very different approaches to their, um, their presentation. So I do think that because of the way the first presentation went where I, where, or the presentation went when I went first, they really made an effort to go back to the strategic plan versus the other one where it was at the end of the, the end of the um, presentation was more about like, well, this is where we're headed. And it, it didn't necessarily take what they had been doing and relate it to the strategic plan. So I think because you are, I mean, I think it depends on what your focus is. If you want to um, show how your activities and where you want to go are aligned with the strategic mm -hmm. plan, then I think going first is probably the better choice. I, I think that makes sense, but I would love to hear. I'm talking to myself. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see that um, I, I think that you should go first. <laughs> yeah. So, the next, so this next slide will be deleted. That was the Angie slide, but she's got her own, she's got her own presentation. Yeah. So uh, I can just give you a brief synopsis. I shared the slides with you, Nikki, but basically I'll tell everybody else. Just basically what I do is um, remind people of the portrait of a graduate process that we used and how that was 60 plus members of our four communities working together to do to um, design the portrait and then it shows how the process went from a very broad look at the current state of the world and what's coming for our graduates um, it, to narrowing it down to what was important for our four communities for our graduate and then the reason that was important to me was because the next slide about the strategic plan shows that it was the similar kind of process except that the strategic planning was done during the pandemic and during the summer and so the number of people that um participated in that was about a third half to a third less than what we had in the in the um portrait of graduate and then i go into the three uh well the four goal areas we didn't really change that there's four goal areas we just in order to um to facilitate being able to lead the goal areas. We took goal area three on student wellness and engagement and we wrapped it into um, student success. So now student success is student success and engagement and it includes those same goals. And then um, the culture includes the student wellness. So it's culture and student wellness or culture and wellness because culture and wellness goals are for all of our members of our, of our um, community, not our community, our school community in particular. And then I go through and, and just r share the language of those goal areas, and that's it. Takes me maybe 10 minutes. That was my question. Okay. Yeah. I think the, that's good. The, the other thing, while we're talking about the presentation, the format, and Christine and Nikki, this would be something, uh, what we did in the other two towns. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is just like it runs just like a, an annual meeting. So the moderator will read the preamble to the warning, and then the moderator will say uh, any questions, and then they'll go to Article 1. And then what was helpful was to have Article 1 on a slide so that when the whole Zoom meeting was looking, they all had Article 1 right in front of them. And then it'll say, we're going to talk about this later, but it'll say, by Australian ballot. Any questions? We're not going to vote today. We're going to vote on uh, April, whatever it is, 6th. Um, any questions? And then, okay, then Article 2. So we would then have a slide that just just has Article 2 uh, up. So d d everybody we follow? Have, yeah, it's, is this, is, this is Article 1, David, at the beginning, right? Uh, First article. No, no, no. That's, like, that's like Article 4 or 5. Yeah. 
in the okay. warning. Yeah. We'll, we'll look at the warning later, and Christine yeah. will just chuck yeah, it, it's we'll just a cut, it's a cut and paste. It, it's okay. really, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, back to. Okay, so, so Angie's presentation is now yep. at the top. Um, and I think, well, Christine, you were going to talk a little bit here, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we haven't mapped out exactly, but what, what I intend to do is um, at the at the future of education slide, give a little bit of background into why, and it, it all ties to what Angie's saying. You know, the world is changing. Kids need to um, we need to prepare kids for jobs that aren't even in existence right now, and and go into a little of that, and then we'll delete the next slide. I mean, I'm sorry, we won't delete that slide. We'll delete that slide, and then really kind of tie it into what we're doing at school in practice and kind of show some of the highlights and some of the ways we're already moving in that direction um, and explain that to the community pretty clearly. And, and we thought showing actual pictures of staff and students engaged in this kind of work made the most sense. Um, I will talk about what, what deeper learning is um, as well, but then really kind of take a deep dive into what we're doing in the school. So, and, you know, in this slide, you see Miss Skihan, who's um, working really hard to do interdisciplinary work in her third grade class. She's, you know, designing curriculum with flexible learning opportunities. It's project-based, it's integrated, and the kids are so excited about the work. So they are um, creating carnivals. I mean, they're, they're designing them, they're doing, um, doing area and perimeter and and creating their own carnival plan and then they they program these bee bots to to uh drive through the carnival it's, it's pretty incredible to watch so just sharing some of the great things that are going on um talk about how our students are leading the learning their own learning and um and teachers are providing them with more opportunities to think through things and explain their thinking and defend their thinking and um embed opportunities for discourse within this within the school day uh, on a regular basis that's very important so this is first grade ruby venata and she is absolutely explaining um, why 64 is greater than i think it was 48 using manipulatives and words and math vocabulary and and teaching the other kids um, we have our middle school math teacher on the next slide um, he's teaching eighth graders, all sorts of incredible things and tying in math. So this student, Jared, is um, doing a, uh, oh, I'm going to have to get the math lingo right. He's graphing out with a linear function how, how um, much money it's going to, how much money he's going to make in a year if he is paid minimum wage. So kids are really interested in that kind of work. They're they're figuring out how um, how long it's going to take them to save up five five thousand dollars to buy a car. So we're really embedding um, uh, innovative ways for kids to engage in their learning by solving complex problems that they're very interested in. And then, of course, our outdoor education. Um, as we we shift to a more student driven approach, we put kids in the driver's seat. They're leading projects. In this, in this picture, these first graders are out in the woods and they are planning and designing and mapping out their fairy houses and working together and collaborating um, and problem solving and innovating outside in, in the 17 acre woods. And here's a picture of that carnival. This is uh, our kids in self-directed learning. They're monitoring their own learning with guidance from the teacher. So it's a, the teacher becomes the facilitator and the kids you know, take, take the lead of their learning and um, so I just go into our vision of the future and, and what it's going to look like. So we're trying to trying to really make it exciting and show the direction that we're going and it ties right into the strategic plan if that makes sense. So and so Christine just a quick question. Yeah. So do you think these slides you just showed mm -hmm. would be best to come I mean this is all part of the article you just showed right it's the yeah. nine million whatever Yep. Um, so do you think those slides would be best to come right after Angie and then push all of the numbers and data to the end of the presentation? I, I but think I'm starting to lean towards as I watch this again. Yeah, I think okay. that makes sense, David. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that's what I think. And and then you even even 
things like high school tuition numbers, mm -hmm. enrollment, just yep. to do all the data at the end. Yeah, yep. that's what that I'm thinking. Sense. Um, we do want to talk about, we, you know, I, I shared with Nikki that we're in the, you know, beginning stages of the restructure conversation with our team. And, you know, we were brainstorming some of the things that we thought were positives that came out of a difficult year. Um, so we may change some of these things based on what we gather from the restructuring committee, but we have, we, I think we have time to do that. that and again, good. even with this slide, I was, my intent was that we tie this to the strategic plan so that mm -hmm. um, yeah. because yeah. a lot of these things are directly tied to the strategic plan. And so COVID sucked, but there are some positives that came out of it that are continuing to move us in the direction that we want to go in. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Good so we point. can move those. Then we just get into the goals, you know, the budget. Um, and these are, yeah. these are yeah. repeat slides. Yeah. So we, I feel yeah, like it's important to always show how we're meeting the quality standards. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. next slide, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. you were on it. <laughs> Keep going. Um, and I think it's just important for our community to see that we're not like over spending. Um, yep. So we have it, two slides on that. Yeah. Now, go, go back to that other slide, Christine. Is that? Yep. So, yeah. So that would be FY21 at the top, right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Good catch. <laughs> oh, gosh. Me. Ah. And I don't know if that's editable. Is that a picture or is it editable? No, I have it in a spreadsheet so I can go in and edit it and then. Okay. It's not it. critical. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it is. It is. <laughs> <Right. It's a laughs> <good guess. laughs> Nobody will notice other than me. Right. Um, so those two, those two, there's two Vermont uh, quality standard slides. Yeah, that's good. Yep. And then. Yeah. That, so those are, we, so we'll put those um, number slides before the changes to the 2022 budget. Yeah. Um, that we skipped through earlier. Um, but I wanted to look to the board to make sure that this is an appropriate direction um, based on our community, what we've presented in the past, um, and what you think is important for them to see. <laughs> do, you want, yeah, I, do you want me to run? So I'll just, do you mind if I, um, scroll through the rest of them and yeah, stop yeah the rest of so boring. <laughs> it's, it's just the the numbers and yeah. the tax rate and we have to finish this slide up we don't have this part done at the bottom yeah, yeah. The, yeah there we go what is the tax rate up by christine three cents uh three pennies okay yep, yeah. yep. that should should let's hope and pray that's not a tough sell yeah yeah okay it looks good to me it looks good to me too Thanks, yeah. Scott. Um, yeah, I wanted you guys to see kind of, because we chose a different direction this year and we um, we chose uh, to delete a lot of, uh, in the previous years, we've talked about a lot of our struggles. Um, and I feel like this year we've all struggled enough um, and that it was important to talk about um, where we were going from here and and what was really important to us. Um, and this is just, having just completed the strategic plan is such a great year to take that opportunity and showcase it. I think that's great. Looks good. Cool. And I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I think celebrating successes and showing that off is fantastic. The more the merrier, I think. And uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, great. Okay. Um, now, Nikki, Matt is going to moderate, right? As far as I know, yeah, Matt's moderating. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and again, oh, yeah, so that, well, that just, um, well, that let's move to the next topic. <laughs> so, yeah. items to action, and now we can just keep going on. Um, so, the annual school meeting date. Um, so, one of the things that we need to approve today um, is the structure of how we're going to do the annual school meeting. Um, and I will admit that I went out on a limb um, because I've gotten a lot of phone calls coordinating between the town and the school. Um, and the limb that I went out on was that um, in this year, it would make sense to do a joint meeting between the town and the school where the town will go first and the school will go second. Um, it will be a really long meeting. Um, but Matt, <laughs> Matt has facilitated um, 
conferences and really long meetings before. Um, and he's going to build in hopefully some timeouts um, and breaks and maybe some entertainment type things. Who knows? Um, but we just felt like um, in talking to the, so I went to a couple select board meetings um, to talk to them about how they wanted to do things. And um, it's going to, the town is going to have um, CATV record it and host it. Um, and so it just started to make more sense to do it all on one day, have one video that gets recorded by CATV and then it just goes up and it's done. And the select board thought, um, doing it the maximum. So we have to do the meeting within 10 days of voting. Um, and we decided to push it to the maximum so that people had time to find that video and review it um, before the voting day. So um, so the dates are, I wish I had this right in front of me. The meeting is, I believe. I'm, um, I'm gonna, let me April. pull up, the, I'll pull up. Oh the yeah, warning. pull up the warning. There we go. <laughs> let me pull up the warning, yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, you did. I found you, it. You need to pull I, up the warning earlier. Did you find it? I did find it. Yeah, I okay. did find it. So. I think it's the 24th of April. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I couldn't, yeah. just, I couldn't remember if it was the 24th or 26th. Yeah. It's the Saturday before. It's two Saturdays before town meeting. So it's the 24th. Um, and we do it at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Um, and we our meeting would just start when the town's meeting ended. Um, so, so, so well, that, that's our first topic of discussion and something that we need to vote on. So, so yeah, so Nikki, hold on a second. Just so if, if the town, how could that be 9 a.m. if we're following the town? Are they starting at 7 a.m.? Um, no, we need to say that needs to be a different time, it needs to say following. I think you actually have to have a time in there. We have, to have a specific time. We can't do a joint meeting because other communities do joint meetings. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. So you're saying, well, no, because see, technically you have to adjourn the town meeting and you have to open the annual school district meeting. Okay. They, they are by law two separate meetings. Okay. Which is fine. I mean, it, it, it's just a matter of, do you have any idea what time the town wants to go? Is it at 10? No, the town's going at 9. 9, okay. So that's the town meeting. And um, they've, got their, they've got their own warning, right? Yes. So you, so we could say here, what, what do you think that any idea roughly, would, will that take two hours probably? Maybe longer? Nobody knows. <laughs> it, it, Nobody's it, ever done this. <laughs> yeah, but in person it's usually... It's three it's like hours at least, right? Four. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we could just say, you know, school meeting starts at 11 or after the, the you know, we can, you know, we can just say whichever happens first. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the problem from a legal standpoint is just if somebody absolutely wants to go to the annual district school meeting, they've got some gripe or bug or they you know whatever so if the town meeting ends at 10 30 we still need to wait till 11 and do the school meeting right yeah exactly That's why but if you said that the school meeting started at 10 30 following the conclusion of the town meeting and the town meeting was still going yeah then that yeah. person would be tuned into the town meeting and not missing out on the school meeting so i feel like we go earlier than later yeah so so you're saying, okay, I see. All right. So then I think what that would say then, right? It would say April 24th, 2021 at, and you could say 10.30 a.m. or 11 a.m., whichever you prefer. And then in parentheses, immediately following the town meeting. Yeah, the conclusion yeah. of town meeting. Let's say 10. Okay, so I'm going to throw out 10.30. That's really pushing the town, though. Is that an hour and a half? What do you think? Well, but we would write immediately or immediately following the conclusion of town meeting. Yeah. So no. if it's longer, it's fine. And is it the same link? Or is it a different yeah. Zoom link? It's no, it's link? supposed to be the same link. Okay. Yeah. I got an idea to throw out there, and I think it makes sense that um, 
what Nikki said about doing it in one day and, and it works for Matt and and all of our community that can watch this thing. Um, but, you know, with the modern technology, can't we link this video together? Like if we if we had ours start after lunch and theirs was the morning, so we could be sure about these times so that the superintendent was. Well, that's, that, that's what happens in Wethersfield. In Wethersfield, the town went from, or we went, the school went from 10 to 12. And then they had a lunch break, and then the town went from one to three. Um, two separate, obviously, two separate warnings, right? Um, because your district meeting has to be warned separate from the town right. meeting. So you, you could do that. I mean, you could do a break. You could do a break, a lunch break, or something like that. You know, nine to eleven, then a lunch break, and we start at twelve or. Are they dead set on starting at 10? They've already approved their warning. I mean, at nine. They're, uh, oh, that's interesting. They, they, were usually, they usually do start at nine. They yeah. were supposed to, um, they were supposed to vote on their warning today. And I just got an email that the town, because the, the select board's meeting right now, um, and their meeting is going to have to be rescheduled. So they, they have to vote on this by today. So this is interesting. Because <laughs> um, I'm yeah, supposed to have this signed by tomorrow to get mailed. Um, are you saying that they're going to change the May 4 meeting? No, no, they're not no. going to change. No, but they need to um, approve their warning. They have not approved their warning yet. Um, yeah. So no, okay. they're they're meeting on April 24th at nine. Um, and they don't say nine to whatever, right? They just say nine. Right. So. I, I think that that may make sense to, I mean, I, I wish that um, either Matt or Sarah was here, but um, neither one of them is available tonight. Um, so I'm kind of, I mean, what do you guys think? We would start at noon? Yeah, that, that, that could work. And then you'd have an hour for, you have for lunch. Scott, what were you saying? I was just going to say, I mean, a little, after lunch, I don't know if people, if you eat it new and me starting at 1230 or something or, or one o'clock or, but, but I mean, my, the point I was making, do you think it, is it possible for CATV to put this all together into one presentation? Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah. That's, okay. A matter of fact, what will happen is if we're using the same Zoom link, yeah, yeah, that's easy. Okay. Yeah, they can hopefully just delete the lunch break part. So if that's the case, then does it have to be on the same day? Um, that the Probably thought easier. was that people could just, I mean, so what I was originally thinking before we got, before legal issues cropped up was that we would just do it immediately following as like one yeah. big meeting. Cause it does. I mean, if you're, it, it takes somebody's Saturday, most of it. I mean, that's why I'm hesitant to delay, like to take an hour break. Yeah um yeah well you know you could you could say 11 a.m i mean i don't i just don't know what the issues that the town has um you know whether they whether, whether they're going to be longer than usual or not longer than usual we, I mean, we don't know and i mean when when we were all on the when i was at the last select board meeting we were kind of thinking that the combined meetings would be around three hours we tried yeah. to go, we tried to be pretty brief in our presentation yeah. for, that, for that reason. For That was one of the reasons. Yeah. Well, I but you're going to need to put in breaks anyway, so you might as well throw a lunch break in there if you're going to be yeah. anywhere close to lunchtime. Yeah. Although I know what you mean. Then you've... you've it's then a whole you Saturday. Could, yeah. You, well, yeah. Then you could, it's a whole Saturday. You could lose people. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I understand that. Um but do you want to ruin two Saturdays or one? Just one. But if it, if you can do it without taking it until three o'clock in the afternoon, I think people would be more apt to participate. If it's nine to noon, that's what I'm thinking. If we go at eleven, I'm with you. I think I think that's the thing to do. Do eleven o'clock okay. or immediately after the meeting, and never mind lunch. Surely, I mean they don't usually go. 
They can eat I all their really, but it went long last year, right? I don't know of a time that it's ever gone short. I've I always remember sitting there. Can't we ask you first? I know. I'm thinking the same like, thing. Can't we just say we're going first? Like it's eight, eight, eight a.m. We could go I'm before. <laughs> eight, eight, eight a.m. Hold on, no. We could go at eight a.m. <laughs> but they, everybody's in their house. They're not going anywhere. You no, know, they're home. Yeah. And I might be will be significantly shorter than town meeting. Yeah. Now, now, Nikki, yeah, because normally what would happen is we have school meeting before, then town meeting happens on town meeting day, right? Right. And and in Heartland, that's traditionally started at 9 a.m. Yes. And voting is going on by Australian ballot while the town meeting is going on. Yes. Yeah. And, and that meeting usually goes till about 11 or 12? I feel like it's usually one. One. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, I've only been to the one, so. What was that, Beth? So people start passing out from hunger. Yeah, I mean, it, it really, the population, it, the, the room is half as populated by one. Yeah. yeah. But they'll be home near their refrigerators. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They can grab food. Mm -hmm. They will not I mean, be passing out. We could go longer. What? We so could go, go longer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Matt was planning on keeping it. I mean, Matt has ideas and strategies to keep it tight. Um, I just think no break. I don't think break is going to help. No. It's no all maybe a maybe a five minute break or something. Well, you know, try try to, try to wrap up the town meeting by quarter of eleven, right? And then we start at eleven. I mean, maybe if we're back to back, it'll push them along. That's what I'm thinking. It might. We don't know. And this is a nobody knows how a Zoom well, meeting. Well, they might well, know kind of because they're doing the select board meetings by Zoom, like maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did the other um, town meetings go? Did you I attend? Did. Yeah, the other town meetings basically the same. I mean the. Uh, um, yeah, but uh, but they were. Well, Weathersfield does exactly what you're trying to do. They. Mm -hmm. They have it on the same day. They always have it on the same day. The school goes in the morning, town goes in the afternoon. But but they they do a lunch break, you know. And when it's in person, they have, you know, they have soup and sandwiches, and it's it's just one big love fest, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, yeah, so so I think I think that's a good model. Now again, we're we're we're. Uh, what did Windsor do, David? And then Windsor, because now, remember, the school district is literally separated from both those towns. Mm -hmm. so, so what happened is Windsor had their own annual school district meeting on a, on a Thursday night. And then I think Saturday, the town had theirs in Windsor. And then Monday night, the West Windsor had theirs. So they, they, they had to break it up. I, I think it's great to do it the same day. I mean, I, I, I you know, the, the problem doing it the same day when we're back out of COVID is, is that we don't, you know, we don't all have town meeting day off, right? Right. Yeah, no, we can't do this. So this was kind of an interesting experiment. I thought would be valuable for an, from an experimental standpoint. Um, yeah. I mean, I just know from a legal standpoint, you can't warn the annual school district meeting and the annual town meeting at the same time. Right. Okay. You you can't. I know you in can't. The same morning. In the same morning. No, you can't. Yeah. You've, um, got to, you've got to have people know. Here's when the town meeting starts. Here's when the school district meeting starts. Now, what the town can do, and West Windsor used to have to do this occasionally, if they're not done by eleven they can suspend their meeting then we start our meeting mm -hmm. then okay. they can go back to their meeting you follow what i'm saying yep and west windsor used to do that when they were a, a separate district about halfway through town meeting they'd stop they they would I, I think the moderator would say we're gonna are there any objections to suspending the town meeting and moving to the school district meeting no objections and th and then he would call the school district meeting to order okay and I think that could work this time. I think if we put 11 a.m. down, it's going to either force them to move fast or suspend. 
and then they pick then they pick it up on the other end do we need to just say that's what we're doing and then ask for forgiveness or yeah well do we well, ask first well nikki what were you saying about you're not sure they've approved theirs yet um, they have solidified the time and had a very long discussion about it, but I don't think they, I think they were supposed to approve their warning today. So they solidified the time. I, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> as much as, as far as you know, yeah, as much as they tend to, um, I can, no. I was going to pull up the municipal warning cause this is, can everybody see that? <laughs> oh, right. Cause we sent that. I sent that to you. Um, can you see it or no? Barely. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me make it a little bigger. Um, is that helping? No. Yeah. 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 So this is the Heartland morning and it looks like they want to start right. Legal voters are further warned a public meeting 9 a.m. under existing COVID conditions. Yep. So they, I don't know if they'll stick with this, but. Of course, the other thing they don't do is they don't next to the article say by Australian ballot, but everybody knows that, right? Yeah, I guess. Do so they say all, it's all it's, Australian ballot? It's all by Australian ballot. No, yeah, no. so the, the whole thing covers it. Yeah. Um, so it, texting it like, David Orson. What'd you say? If I'm texting David Orson. <laughs> yeah since we know he's not in the select board meeting right now. I think you'd be safe by saying 11 a.m., which is, hold on, let me see. How do we know he's not in the select board meeting? Because they had to suspend it. I got an email. Oh, that's what you were saying. Yeah, I, I multitask. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what? You said something about the meeting. I was like, what? what? Yeah, so the select board, yeah, so I there was a, listserv post that the select board meeting had to be rescheduled um because teams has been down um their their platform is down um okay so if we say 11 the time meeting then i think zoom i think zoom is a good platform i mean we, you know we've used that before mm -hmm. i you know um in in both town in 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 Windsor, we use different platforms. We used Google Meets because we're used to using Google Meets, and you know, and in Weathersfield, same thing. We used Google Meets. They used Microsoft Teams in the afternoon, but but I think it's a great idea to just stay on this one Zoom number. It's yeah. It's for the same Zoom number. We're there. I think if you say 11 a.m., I mean, why would that not be good, right? I mean, I think that would yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Um, the problem is you we've got to get this signed, right? Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which is not a big deal. We have DocuSign. So we, we can send this out tomorrow to all the board. Once we decide on the time, and maybe you and David could play around with that tonight or tomorrow, Nikki. Yeah. And, and then, but but yours has to be a separate warning, just like this. And, and then uh, Tina or Laurie will send it out on, with DocuSign. And you, you've all used DocuSign, right? You just click and it signs it and then we get it over to uh to brian yeah so how, can we um so we can vote to make that our time and then can we make a backup time just to uh yeah that was my, that was my question like do we have to does the motion right now have to include a time no i think it's just to approve the warning okay so then, I would like everybody's approval. <laughs> like if I'm making these decisions on the fly, I want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I get that. You need um, you need some input, and I it, it sounds like maybe the the select board needs to be part of this. Yeah, because I would hate well, to look really, if they really had their heart set on two and a half hours or something. I mean, right. I, I don't know. I don't think they, I mean, in our dis last discussion, they had no idea um, no. what. Do you know if there are any, are there any heavy topics in the town? Are they buying fire trucks or anything like that? No, John's not proposing any fire trucks. Um, I mean, I, I, I didn't look at the, we could look at their warning again. Hold on. Let's see if the. I mean, there are some. 
Um, there's a new position, I think. Um, for what? Makes me want to talk about it right now. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> Um, <laughs> is it half time or full time? General fun and inside. Or inside. <laughs> um, Cover home repair and uh, so it's it's the general fund highway appropriation. Shouldn't be very controversial, but I know if it's anything like the town meetings. No, that's the one that's probably going to be. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean they 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 <laughs> love them. Um, and then it's donating to uh, to community access TV. Voting on a fifteen hundred dollars to cover ho cover home repair. Oh yeah, there's a ton of those little ones. Yeah, that all have to be listed separately now. That's crazy, huh? Well, it's because of the Australian ballot. Normally, they're voted on as a big. Yeah, but I don't see anything controversial on there. But you never know; anything can be controversial. Let's fold it into the highway. Um, but. But so here's what I would propose. I would propose that we say either 11 or 12:30, and my first vote would be 11. And they try to finish town meeting in two hours. And if that doesn't work, then we move to 12:30. Yeah. Because that gives them. Because at that point, people are going to need to break. Anyway. Right, and they'll have refused to. If we get like. If they refuse to break at 11 to go to the school meeting, then they're probably going to refuse to break at all. And so that gives them three and a half hours, and then we go. But I'm going to fight for 11. Who's the chair of the of the select board now? Scott's dad. <laughs> Scott, can you, can't you work this out over a little dinner or something? <laughs> I don't think it works that way with the Richardsons. No, nope. maybe, sure. <laughs> maybe, no. Just bring out a big bowl of fruit and pour that maple syrup and cream in there. And I can give him a call. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I'll. Um, he yeah, loves yeah. me. I'll do. I'll do what I can. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, like this proposal, and I mean, what do you? You guys do a joint meeting in St. Johnsbury too. How do you pull yeah. that off? Yeah, no, it's the same thing. I mean, one goes ahead of the other. And and, and, and what's interesting is every year they flip-flop. One year the yeah. board goes first, then the next year the town goes first. So That's probably a good way to do it yeah. in the long term. I guess I, one one piece of input, I, I just can't see I can't see the stopping and starting of this of the town meeting part. No. Yeah, neither. I can't. Well, yeah, it's hard to picture that. First of all, the people have to agree to it, right? Because they have to say any objections to suspending the meeting, and you could get objections, and then <laughs> and then you stop. I would rather if Nikki, if you think if David says, you know, we're probably two two to two and a half hours, I would just say, look, okay, why don't you take? I guess part of it is also Matt. I mean, is because I know Matt's life. I mean, can Matt has Matt blocked out that Saturday to kind of be around? Yes, I think so. Okay. He knows he's doing I mean, we could do eight. We could do eight. We could do eight. I don't know. I think what do you think is, no, Christine's saying yes. <laughs> what do you think is better oh, for them? And a lot of people, there might be others doing that too. I right? can't deal with that. <laughs> you can't take a farming community and have an eight o'clock meeting. That's just not right. The cows wait until eight o'clock to be milked? Uh, <laughs> sort of. Who knew? I, I had no idea we were going this direction with this. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think it's a good plan. And I think I'm glad, Nikki, that you, you know, I think it was good the way you tried to be cooperative with them. I think that's great. I think now they've got to work with us and say, look, we, we just don't want to be hanging around till 2 p.m. waiting for our meeting to start. So we can either we can either go at 11 and then you suspend or we'll set ours up for 1230 p.m. If they say they're going to go two and a half hours, do we want to hammer it out at 1130? We could. People will be tired I, probably, but we could. I mean, people will be tired, but it's also like, I, I kind of wonder if people are going to watch it later. Afterwards? Yeah. I think folks are just going to like leave it on in the background and like go about their Saturday doing chores and listen to town meeting 
and things happen and that's you know and we're just looped right into it like because there's no voting right yeah we're giving this way more thought than anyone else will you're and right and i guess we should although we've given this I just don't think, yeah board. Round I, don't, I don't want to jinx it, but you also, you don't have a, a terribly controversial budget this year, right? right? I mean, Weathersfield had, Weathersfield was trying to sell an 18 cent tax increase and, and, and they had 75 people online, 75 people showed up to their meeting and, uh, and that, it was a good they meeting know. and it was well facilitated. Uh, questions were good. You know, and so I don't know. I don't. I don't think you're going to get a lot, quite frankly. Yeah. But, I th- but, but what I know has to happen is you have to have a time on the warning. I yeah. know that for a fact. Okay. So I think my order of events would be eleven would be priority number one, and then based on how they respond to our priority number one, I will pick eleven thirty or twelve thirty. Yep. Perfect. Is good with that. Okay. Okay. Let me write my notes to myself. And, um. <laughs> and, and then while you're while you're writing notes, Nikki, then I would assume then you will keep Lori in the loop. Oh and, yeah. And and, and Tina, because they'll be the ones to get. So be looking in your inbox for a DocuSign document. And that's when you'll find out what time the meeting is. Because <laughs> no, I'll because email everybody. Okay, I'm, so Levin um, is our first choice. Watch it be a beautiful Saturday. It'll probably be our first 70 yeah. degree day. Be 80 degrees for sure. For sure. Right. And we're going to all be sitting at these stupid screens. <laughs> That's okay. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So I will uh, shoot those emails out as soon as um, we're off the phone. Um, and then let me ask a question, uh, Nikki. One more question. Yeah. Uh, I thought we had another month to decide all this, but I'm glad you were on top of it because I. I lost track of time. No, we, we have to thank Laura Bergstresser and I think it's Michelle Riley. All right, good. We like being you. on top of me. <laughs> but here's my question. The warnings will go up in the normal places, right? Town hall, library, school usually puts them up, okay? Then it's my understanding that they're going to mail every voter in town a ballot. Is that correct? I think that's the way it's happening. That's what I heard. I mean, I yeah. don't know if that's the fact and when they do that they'll have to mail them a school ballot and a town ballot right all in the same little envelope am i right about that yep okay and then um and then will the do you know whether they'll mail the warnings with that ballot or maybe not no i think the warnings are going to go that's why this has to get done tomorrow the warnings are supposed to go out as a letter um so the warnings will go out um, shortly. And then, and then one last question, and then I'll I'll, I'll stop here. Are, we, are they publishing the traditional Heartland Town report, or the report that's got the school and the yes, town? that's going to get published. Yes. And the warnings have to be in there also. Yes. Okay. So that's where we're hitting deadlines. Is things have to go to the printer. Okay. Um. So. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and, and particularly Christine. the uh, the mailing, um, because I think right. the warning has to go out 30 days ahead of time, right? 30 days, no less than 30, no more than 45. Yeah, and so I think that that's going out as a mailing, as a letter. Um, okay. So. Yeah, and actually all you technically and legally have to do is tack it up, right? You don't have to technically mail it or... Even those town reports that they do and those little thick binders, I mean, they're beautiful and they, his, you know, they're historic and, yeah. but they're not, they're not required by law. You know, right. it's really just the warning. Well, and the other thing, um, so I have to write a letter, which you guys have all seen my letter. Um, I took that letter and distilled it. Not the, there was the four page letter that was really long, but then I took that down and distilled it into a one pager. Wow. Um, that good. also gets mailed. Um, That's good. Christine reviewed that because I had to get that done like within an hour. It's really good. Yeah. 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 And Christine is. All of our stories converge into the same message. Right. So, yeah, Scott. Nikki, um, did you find anything out from Elizabeth Burroughs? Yes. So, 
So let's um sounds like we're kind of yeah, we're wrapping up this one. We need to vote on the um warning. So let's vote on the warning and then we'll talk about that. Um so oh, but we need to do that discussion before we vote on the warning. Okay. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> um so uh Scott raised a point um having looked at the Mount Escutney um board warning. Um they uh their school directors um got approved um new amounts this year and i don't know if david did do they do that warning every year or mm -hmm. the um the amount that the stipends for school directors yes usually on the floor okay but, That's... but, but yeah but, but okay. this time so, everything's in australia um and i guess right now then if we're not voting for that on the floor that's coming out of the school budget is that correct christine so we get five hundred dollars out of the school budget for each believe, of us. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so Scott raised that. So, Mount Scottney board members are um, getting a thousand, um, and the chair is getting twelve fifty. Um, I don't know how long we've had the five hundred dollars stipend. Um, Scott, do you? Uh, it's just been there as long as it's been definitely been there that way as long as I've been a board member. At least ten years nine yep nine so yeah so a long time um and scott and i were talking earlier today that um like particularly like i was running the numbers for scott in my head that doesn't even cover his mileage um to <laughs> to sign the manifests and everything like that um and and then i was talking to elizabeth burrows and um way back when she was getting um west windsor was doing stipends of a hundred dollars and she was having to hire babysitters um, and like that a hundred dollars when you're hiring babysitters for at least 12 meetings a month, more like 24 or 30 or 36 or not a month, a year, um, that doesn't go very far. And, um, so I ran the numbers for me and I'm, I'm averaging like five to seven meetings a month. It's like $8 a meeting. Um, and it's just, you talk about, I mean, it's, it's an equity issue. It's, um, those stipends would prohibit anybody that needs to hire babysitters to go to meetings um, on their own. And so I think it was a valid point for Scott to bring up. Um, and I think it's an awkward point for us to discuss because we're talking about how much we pay ourselves. Um, and Christine's answer of the fact that it comes out of the school budget um, answers it for me for this year is that we're not gonna tackle it this year because it's not a directly warned topic. Um, but that, I think it's something that we need to look further into um, and maybe propose something different. I think Woodstock members get at least a thousand and maybe more, they may be more like two. Um, so I think that we are, and I don't know, David, do you know what Hartford gets, Christine? it's more than a thousand i know that yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think when i was on the board in cornish which was a long time ago it was a thousand so we're yeah so you guys deserve <laughs> to get paid some more <laughs> scott yes i think you, you brought it up a really good point i had had no idea that it, um that it that school directors might get paid from the town budget or stipend from the town budget and i didn't know that was could be that way um but it'd be neat to know all what could what the possibilities were and then um i think it would also make sense to do more research in our su and in the region too yeah, yeah. or perhaps yeah the region but definitely the su it seems like there could be some fairness or equality within our su yeah Good point. david do you know where weathersfield is uh I think there are a thousand. So we're really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would just say to that we need to actually make sure we publicize this because I know, I think I went a year without even getting, like I had no idea that this was even part of it. So if, if folks don't even know that this exists as an option for when running for an office, you know, that's that's a big problem. It's a hurdle. Good point, like, Beth. I didn't. Like, I mean, I've, I've laughed at it when I've gotten the $500 check, which then has taxes taken out of it. And you just kind of look at it and you're like, 
that covers what I do. <laughs> and and so it's just been comical to me. And and then um, I started, you know, Scott raised it today, and I started to think about, but like if I had to hire a babysitter, there's no way I could do this. And um, you know, if we were like if I had to drive farther, it wouldn't even cover mileage. Um, this year we're not driving, but there's there's just a lot that goes into it. And Beth has talked about equity of being on a board and and this is a huge part of that. And it's time. It does take time. Yeah. Question about, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the only problem, and I know you've already said you're not going to do it this year because the problem with that would be we would have to put it in the budget. We'd have to change that nine nine million whatever. You'd have to have a warning on the article that would warn it. But, yeah. but it would be easy to do, and we should probably just try not to forget to do it next year. I mean, it's yeah. I think that this is a good time to say that we need to do this next year. Um, and I don't know, like maybe we do put it as a separate line item. Um, it's. I think it is now. I think you've got a line under board. Right under in the school budget. In the, in your school budget, right. Right, but like, do we pull it out of and put it in the? Um, can we take it out of the school budget and make it a, just a straight warning that comes out of? I mean, I guess it kind of still comes out of the school budget, but it would be separate from the school budget. Does that make like because the, the way it was warned? Because it sounds like they vote on it annually and. Yeah, because I think by law the, the taxpayers set your salary. So that's why you have to have a warning that right. that's it. Unless it's not unless it's not gonna change. But they did they change it this year? Yeah, I think they went they might have gone a little bit higher. I don't know. What did they go? A thousand and twelve fifty or twelve yeah. fifty and fifteen hundred? Yeah. 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 But they vote on it annually. I would think the only time you'd have to vote on it annually is if it changed, but you know, maybe you should have had a warning on there. I don't know. Okay, maybe I said something that was incorrect. Um, that's a very good possibility. I did say that something that was incorrect, but so it, school directors need to be paid out of the, a school budget, not Correct. out of the town budget. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. It's just been done traditionally on the floor in the West Windsor meetings. I know they've done it everything from on the floor. Yeah, West Windsor did everything on the floor. Windsor used to also do it on the floor. Uh, okay. Weathersfield does the salaries on the floor. Yeah, so. But it's during their warned school meeting. Right. School right. budget. Okay. I'm sorry. I misspoke. No, I think I think that this, Scott, I'm really glad that you raised this issue because it's something that I've looked at before. Um, and right now, um, the chair earns, like, we all get the same. We're all getting the same 500 um and there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of extra response do more work right yeah. um so and i'll do, i'll do a little more research too just on i mean not yeah just on comparisons and yeah and the you know yeah that would be helpful for us to know because it sounds like we're kind of um in the dark ages maybe um thank you, thank you nikki yeah, thank you, Scott, for bringing it up. Um, so let's move back to um, approving the warning. David, do you want to put that back up again? Yeah, I will. Hold on. We all reviewed it today, right? I think I saw that everybody reviewed it. Okay. Um, and Sarah found one mistake for us, um, but I don't did that. Uh, Let me see if I fixed that or not. I might have already fixed it. Okay. Well, you needed a parentheses right where my, and I took took care of that. Where was her other mistake? Uh, to vote the, the is off, we were missing an is. Yeah, so it's there, an article four um, to vote the school district is authorized. It, there, it was just the school district authorized to borrow money. So somebody changed. Here's a question, I don't, I don't think this is silly, but is there any way we can format it so we can get Colleen's name on the page one? Yeah, I'd like that too. I think it is. Believe it or not, I think it is, oh, now. It is now. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so Thanks, I guess I'll just read this out loud to put it. I mean, not it's not going in the minutes, but in case anybody reviews this and can't see this warning. Um, so it's warning, uh, school district of Heartland, Vermont, annual school district meeting, um, Saturday, April 24th, 2021. 
Uh, we're proposing 11 as our first choice via Zoom. Uh, voting by Australian ballot Tuesday, May 4th at Damon Hall. Um, polls open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, join with the Zoom meeting code um, or join by phone. Okay, so Article 1, to elect the school district officers for the ensuing year by Australian ballot. Article 2, to act on the reports of the school district officers for the past year. Um, so that would be, that's our presentation. How are we going to vote on that by Australian ballot? You mean Article 5? You want Article 5? Where are you? Article 2. No, it just, well, t technically, the, I know in Windsor and Wethersfield, they had a ballot item that said, approve the reports of the school district offices. Yes okay. or no. Okay. And that's why Laura, I don't know, who puts the, the ballots together? Laura? Uh, probably Brian. Brian. Yeah. yeah. He, he technically should have a ballot item for each one of these. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, he'd have the school district elections, right? Right. He's got those. And then he would just have, you know. Prove. Now, again, if that one got forgotten, it's probably not going to stop anybody from anything. But No, but it's. I guess what it is is it's to yep. prove the reports that we put out. Yep. In the, and, the book. Yep. and then Article 3 would be the same thing. He, he would yep. have a ballot yep. item on there. Shall yep. the voters of the school district pay taxes, blah, blah, blah? Yes or no? That one makes more sense to me. Um, okay. Just because yeah go scott yeah article one how about some language that um clarifies that there you know that there may be some directors i'm not sure what i'm trying to say not all the directors are going to be voted on that's what you know it reads like we're electing all the directors but it's only the directors that are up for election yeah and what happened in weathersfield is they and we and amount of scrutiny is they they just talked people through that uh, okay you know, they just said the following two people are up free election a oh. one year term by this one and a three year term i mean i don't know what it is this year who's on the ballot this year for, for all of you uh beth and colleen right yeah yeah okay so those people would be traditional you know, language david yeah this is traditional language yeah okay. this, this is standard legal language here so I'm kind of hesitant to change I it. Wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with it. Okay. Yeah. okay. To make it complete sentences where the words got missed. Um, okay, so Article 3 is to vote that the school district pay taxes to the town treasurer, such taxes to be to collected on the same schedule voted on at town meeting um, by Australian ballot. Uh, Article 4, to vote that the school district is authorized to borrow money from the Capital Reserve Fund or a commercial lender in anticipation of taxes to meet the requirement of the school district for the ensuing year and to authorize the execution and delivery of notes and or orders to the school district by Australian ballot. Article 5, shall the voters of the Heartland School District approve the school board expend $9,228,700 9 which is the amount the school board has determined necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in equalized, will result in education spending of $19,770.23 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 3.59% higher than the spending for the current year by Australian ballot. And then Article 6 to transact any other business which may properly come before the meeting. Um, and that would be via the Zoom part. So that's, I don't know, <laughs> but that'll be interesting. Um, but I think we leave that on there. So everybody reviewed it um, and we'll change the time before we send it to you. So sh can I get a motion to approve it? I motion to approve okay. the morning for the school district meeting. For 2021. Right. Well, actually, for uh, FY20. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's the 2021 annual school district meeting. Right. Yeah. Is there a second? Do I need to say it again? <laughs> Wendy, second. you're good, right? I got it. 
Awesome. I'll second that. Okay, Scott seconds. Okay, all those in favor, or no, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, uh, they're, everybody approved. It's four to nothing. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, so our next topic is setting the next agenda. Um, so our next meeting is so April 19th would be our next meeting. Does that jive with it? Does everybody agree with me? Yes. Okay. Let me stop presenting. Oh, yeah. Um, so what date again? The 19th? April 19th. So that'll be at, uh, no, that's still before the town meeting, right? Right. The, the town meeting, meeting would be that weekend. Okay. The, the meeting presentation would be that weekend. So it's the 19th of April. Yeah. Um, you've traditionally been what, the third Monday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe we're the third Monday. Okay, good. So items up for discussion, I think the anti-racism task force will have made some progress by then. Um, I just had a thought and it went right. Through. You wanted to, Nikki, didn't you want to discuss some work management for you? Um, no, that's at the next uh, task force meeting. Okay. Yeah, no, we're good. Um, we, David and I can give you a recovery update, uh, right? Plan and restructuring yeah. updates. Yeah. Um, I'd like to know more about the woods. And if, I don't know if there's time in the next month to meet with those people, but I think that's a good topic to hear about as soon as you have more information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to know what the priorities were, but I think that'll be part of the recovery plan and restructuring. So what the priorities were out of the SU. Yep. Um, hopefully we'll be able to fill that in. Yeah. Um, I think we need to talk about our building. Um, and Sarah had started a building committee. Um, I'm going to put that on the agenda as, I guess, building committee, and we'll maybe get the ball rolling again on that. And I think um, what Christine had presented to me was that um, with a new round of funding coming, um, the you know the term shovel ready projects are the ones that are going to get the funding, and um, we have known forever that we have issues with our building and we don't have a plan. Um, right. And so we need to make some progress with that. Um, Is there still a plan to move the office? It got um, tabled. It got tabled. I, I think it would be really um, proactive to be ready with a plan. So maybe it's a feasibility study that's done and maybe, I, I don't know if it's too late. Oh, probably because the warning's out, but um, we're using some of the capital capital reserve funding to 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 fund that. You you've got to have a plan that's ready to go um, if you're gonna you know uh, get some of these funds that are coming down the pike. So, is it too late for that, David? Yeah, your your mic's off. Sorry. Yeah, it 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 is. I think too late to do that. <clears throat> Not too late to put a study together. I have yeah. a special vote if we ever wanted to do that. But what's in the capital reserve right now? Is it? Um, I think it's around. Uh, it's just shy of four hundred thousand. Okay. 
I agree, agree with that. Yeah. I, I think the problem with, with Heartland is from what I've heard and even from that study that was done a few years ago, <clears throat> To, to really do what you need to do, it's going to be, you're probably almost going to have to bond for that. You know, you, you, you've got significant work that needs to be done there, both structurally, uh, uh, school safety, and some of the systems, the mechanical systems, you know, so. Well, we, we, I think the issue is we have to sprinkle the entire building. Yeah. Which is a, a large. Yeah, that's money. a lot of money. Yeah. 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 So we have yeah. definitely updated the HVAC system is up to date. We've used COVID um, Esther cares. Yeah, that, that was good. Yeah, that was almost two hundred thousand. Yeah, yep. we've done some upgrades to the um, lock systems, and uh, you know we're trying to automate. That was part of our plan moving forward. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So just things I to think, think about. What it comes down to is um, breaking up the Kappa Gymatorium. Yep. Um, That's a biggie. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's not going to be cheap. No, and that's going to require resprinkling the whole system because we'll hit building code issues. Yep. There's no so, basement. There's no basement in that building, right? No. It was no built basement. on a slab. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. It's hard. Um. But I think it's worth. I think it's worth taking another look at. I really do. Yeah. And I think it's been, what, seven years, eight years since that last study was done? Because um, it was before I was a school board member and it was before I had a kid in the school. Seven. It was like my second year, I think. Yeah, it was before I had a kid in the school. Um, Sounds right. Yeah. So. Are those, those plans are kicking around, Christine? You've seen them? That was the one that um, changed the office, changed the whole front. It was, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it didn't include taking a, a cafeteria, I don't believe. No, it, it didn't. Just, yeah. It was, it was looking at different things. And I think the direction the school is going in maybe has changed since that was yeah. put together. Um, yeah. so, so I think I think we need to we need to move forward. Um, I mean, you're on. you're really. I mean, we've yeah. I mean, we've talked about this a lot. I mean, you really are the only school where you don't have to go by the office to get in, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. So, but I mean, you've taken care of some of that with the different security systems and locks and buzzing in, but it's it's still it's not good. Okay, well, that's on the list. Uh, let's see. Nick, do you think you'll need to have anything on the agenda for just town meeting in case you have any last minute stuff? Yes, I think we should have. Okay. Yeah, thank you. We should put town meeting on there. And one last question Do you, will you need to have the adoption of that equity policy from the SU to come back to this, or can does that just happen at a separate? That happens at the SE level. Yeah, we don't even have to, to worry, about that. We worry about it, right? Okay. Um, I would like, and so this. Uh, hey, uh, a quick, oh. a quick thank you for Wendy because a few minutes ago when she reminded me that that was in, I had not had a chance to look at the SU warning yet agenda, and okay. Wendy had. Thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. So the, the reason I'm texting is I'm communicating with Dave Ormiston for tomorrow. So oh, okay. <laughs> um, he kind of generally likes our 11 o'clock. And so we're going to continue that. Maybe just stay with that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I just want to talk it through with him before we finalize it. But it's looking good. Um, OK. Uh, the other thing, so um, I will admit that I'm using our radar list because I really like it. Um, <laughs> The other thing that I was wondering is, Christine, is it going to be too early to um, give us a quick rundown on the TMP results? Uh, no, it should be. We should we should have them. Okay, that would be I great to just yep. Um, yep. see. And I um, I think I'd said this last time. I was um, I was curious to s compare somehow um, 
how we were generally doing in a COVID year versus a not COVID year. Um, so I don't know if that's comparing like previous years grades to each other instead of just tracking the cohort and how the cohort goes, but how, you know, all of the last fourth grades have compared to each other. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. I can run it that way. So kind of looking at it mm -hmm. I mean, maybe both ways to see that yep. the grades are improving, but also to see um, if this was a dramatic change. Um, yeah. So, so that's yep. a lot. Yeah. We're trying to move through it quickly. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Batty Ray just drained it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I think um, I would take a motion to go into executive session. If that, Wendy, did you get all that, or do you need help? I got it. I got it. I'm good. You're good. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I know you're good. <laughs> Scott, so did you have something? No, I'll make the motion to go into executive session for okay. all, all the right reasons. Okay. I'll second. Uh, Okay, second from Colleen. So um, personnel, personnel issue actually. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so we need to go into executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Um, so all those in favor of going into executive session, please say aye. 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 And Wendy, aye. I'll email you. Uh, I, there won't be any decisions, but I'll 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 email you the adjourn time. Thank you. You always do, and feel better from your shot. Thank you. <laughs> Already, I'm gaining. The Tylenol worked. Yeah. Okay. So I got three eyes. Um, Beth, are you back yet? Okay. So Beth is an abstain. Um, so uh, we'll move into executive session. So All right. I'm going to stop recording right now.